All right, David, clearly I'm in full support, but what does real men wear pink want to accomplish? Um, well, you know, I was um, asked um, a couple of months ago to support uh, real men wear pink, and, and basically what it is is uh, American Cancer Society raising monies for those that are affected by it, um, could be, have been. Um, so they, they asked me and a couple other guys to be a part of it, and I think they started last year where there was about five or six guys, and I think we're up to 12 or 15 guys uh, doing it. And I think I'm the only football player uh, that's, that's doing it. So uh, basically just wearing pink, uh, supporting those men and women who have breast cancer. Um, and so David Fulcher has his own uh, um, little mark of me wearing pink. And my goal was obviously to wear pink every day in the month of October. Um, but here we are in September, and I'm still I'm wearing it right now. Get so head start. I'm excited about it, and I think it gives us an opportunity, and me an opportunity again to give back to the community. You know, on Mother's Day, baseball has the pink bats and gloves and stuff. And I, I, you mentioned men's breast cancer. I think this is totally underreported and unrecognized. Yeah, I, I think, and I was talking to a couple of former players of mine about getting checked for breast cancer. Um, a lot of men who don't know uh, don't get checked, and. I think it's important that all of us get checked to figure it out because um, it doesn't have a zip code, it doesn't have an address. Um, what it does, it just it hits you and then you don't know. And if you don't know, um, it could be terminally ill. Uh, it could do some things to you. So uh, I'm aware of it. Um, I don't have any family members uh, that I know that had breast cancer, but I do know a lot of people who has it and had it. Um, so I'm 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 just being a big advocate advocate for it, and uh, that's why I'm wearing my pink. You've been a community involved, have community involvement since your playing days in many different ways. What about this cause enticed you? Well, you know, th this one, it, 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 like I said, it, it doesn't have a zip code, it doesn't have an address. Um, it just jumps out and grabs you. They all do. Um, but I think for this one, uh, my wife, Joe Judy, was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis uh, 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, that uh, it's devastating. Um, we've been fortunate that it hasn't done anything permanently to her, mm -hmm. but I have an opportunity to be a face for it. And that's today I'm, I'm a face for breast cancer. So um, that's why I'm here today. Have you noticed like last week, you're at the 30th anniversary of your Super Bowl team. You know, you've been in this cause not that long, but for a while now, do you think you're gonna be able to influence some of your fellow athletes? Well, that's the goal. Um, you know, by me being the only football player, uh, there are a few baseball people that are, are part of this, but no actual athletes. I'm the only athlete involved in it, and uh, I think it's special. I mean, if I can get the word out to the guys that I play with, which I did, uh, the people in this community, uh, I live in this community, and um, I, you know, last year, I believe John Fay raised about $17,000, um, which was the, my goal was to beat that. Um, so right now I'm about 2,500 and, and counting. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this not for David Fulcher, but I'm doing it for those that are affected by it and, and would love to have people's help. You said you want to wear pink all of October. You've got a head start. You're already in September. Activities that are planned throughout the coming year to, to raise awareness that you'll be involved in? Oh, there's a lot of things going on. I know uh, we have something going tomorrow at Jag's uh, restaurant in Westchester. Uh, some of the proceeds are being uh, donated to uh, American Cancer Society. Uh, there's a couple of things going on at the Red Stadium, Reds games. Um, that's where we took a lot of our pictures um, at the Red Stadium. So um, there's a whole lot going on. I'm pretty sure you can go to the website and, and see uh, uh, the up and coming events that are out there. But uh, I'm out there and I'm doing what I do. I know there's a, a play coming. One of my favorite movies, The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm, me too. Uh, it's going to coming up uh, pretty soon uh, at uh, one of the theaters here downtown. So uh, I think if you're buying tickets to that, and I think some of the proceeds go there, uh, gives us an opportunity to go out there. And obviously, I'm I'm a big fan of The Wizard of Oz, so I'm definitely going to be there. Okay. And if, if this guy can wear pink, we could all feel pretty manly with it. I can't have you here without asking you some Bengal stuff because, as you mentioned, you're still in the community. You still follow the team closely. Right now, this week, as they try to get to 3-0, and they're overcoming some significant injuries. You guys had one in a Super Bowl that you had to overcome and still play to the last 34 seconds to, with a chance to beat the best team uh, that turned out to be in the NFL. What's it like for a team? What are they going through this week to make up for those losses that they have with, you know, starters? You know, that's why you have backups. Um, and what you try to do is you, you hopefully that the backup is the only difference between the backup and the starter is the number that he's wearing on his chest. Um, but I think that um, 
that they've got some kids that will step into play. I know they just brought in running back Rawls uh, in for uh, Mixon being down. Uh, so I think there's a th- th- this football team is capable of doing what it needs to be done, and that's that's the successfulness in football is keeping everybody healthy. Um, in 16 game season, k- kids are used to playing 11 games in, in college. Um, there's a whole lot to do. You have to really take care of your body uh, as a professional athlete. So I think the Bengals are uh, you know sitting where they need to be at two and zero. Uh, they yeah they've got some injuries, but you know at zero and two with these injuries would look a little bad and right now it looks pretty good but I think this football team can overcome those injuries and those backups are they they that's why they're there they call them backups for a reason and now they're in the forefront and now they just got to get the job done yeah, they earned a spot on that roster yes uh you've been through the highs and lows all the way to the Super Bowl through you know some low moments uh, when Marvin took over and even during his tenure at times you were there last week for the honoring your team and it wasn't a great crowd for a home opener what do you what's your estimation with a guy with a perception that goes way back to the 80s in the, some of the highest highest moments of this team of what how the city supports the Bengals well I, I really believe that this is probably the best fans in football um, and I and I say that not just because I played the game but you know you 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 haven't had too much success getting into the playoffs the team plays well during the season get the playoffs and you lose the game then the last couple of years you don't go to the playoffs but they're still here and they're still doing what they're doing. And as a player, when I played, and I believe back when our teams um, that we had in the 80s, we played for the fans. We didn't play for ourselves. You know, at many times I'm standing on a football field and I got 60,000 out there and I could put my hands up and go like this and they get quiet. That's a, that's a pretty good magic trick. Um, didn't know I had it in me, but to have those people come and support what we do, whether it's 90 degrees or it's 30 below, um, that's why you play the game. You play the game because you love playing it, and those people who are there cheering for you is, is the reason why you're doing it. So um, I think the city of Cincinnati, um, we got some great fans. We got great people here. This is a great town to live in. Uh, that's why I stayed here. Um, my wife's from here, and my kids were born and raised here, and David Fulcher is still here, and I just think that it's all because of what this city has done for me that I give back and do for them. One last thing, David. He, he, Last week, you've had almost a week now to think about it. What was that experience like as you look back on it now? What you thought going in and what it was like to reunite with all those guys? I will tell you this, man. In, in the locker room, we were in the locker room and we walked out of the locker room. We stood there in the tunnel to come out. I almost felt like it was time to go out and play a football game because I had all my old guys back. You know, we didn't have our quarterback. Boomer wasn't there. Our head coach, Sam, wasn't there. Those guys had other obligations. But you could feel the, uh, the energy in that tunnel. And when we came out and they called our name, I was uh, I had to actually high knee myself a little bit because I didn't want to s- stumble and drag my feet and trip on the carpet and somebody laugh at me. But it was it was something that just like going to the Super Bowl, you know, just like being married, just like having your first child. It was so excited, so exciting to hear the crowd cheer one more time when they called David Fulcher number 33. Where's Jerry Rice? Right, I want to hit him. Well, not more, more, not more of Jerry Rice, but probably Roger Craig. Where is he? Because I made him fumble in the Super Bowl, so I'm good with that one. Fantastic. Thank you, brother. Thanks, David. Thank you.